I wish we had some nice fucking weather. It is wet. It's Telling me. Like I'm, I, we've, it feels like I'm over there at the moment. Here it was like it's one degree at overnight and like eight to ten in the day, pissing rain. Yeah, same here, and it's fucking July. Oh, <laughs> there you go. That's why I've got an anorak on. Freezing. Yes. What is it in here? Seven degrees in here. That's that's actually quite cold. Well, let's mm-hmm. warm you up with some potting, hey? Mm. Yeah. Intro. Welcome back, yeah. everyone, to another episode of Vice Press Open Channel, where we get together to talk about the things we've done, the things we've seen, the things we've watched, and the things we've drank. I'm Flora, your host. That there is future head in a jar, James Henshaw. Howdy. And current Quasimodo, <laughs> Matt Ferguson. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Um, That's what I'm today like. we're chit-chatting about a new Beverly Hills Cop film. Um, do some hey. questions and whatever else pops into our heads. So I believe we've all watched said film, the worst titled film in the history of films, Beverly Hills Cop Axel F, which just means absolutely fucking nothing and it gives me the shits mm. to no end. What, what do you think? Like, it's obviously some a room full of marketing geniuses over at Netflix have come up with that one. It's, it's also legal, isn't it? There's a legal reason for it. But, but to it, what sense, though? But because like, the first three are Paramount. One, two, three, fine. Paramount. This is not Paramount anymore because Netflix bought it. So, therefore, they probably want to disassociate. And then also, number three is crap. So, they don't want to do Beverly Hills Cop 4 because then people go, oh, there's a third one because nobody's watched the third one. Yeah. But are, so are you telling the me they couldn't do something better than they couldn't have said Axel Foley or Beverly Hills Cop or just, Returns or, or just Beverly Hills anything. Cop? Again. Baba Booey. <laughs> like, who cares? Beverly like, Hills anything Cop else. Because that's all it was. It was Beverly Hills Cop again. But I have no mm. problems with it Put whatsoever. That on it. it was an enjoyable, uh, well-made film with some some very good laughs. Some Next good... topic. No, I'm joking. Um, some really <laughs> good laughs in it. It was... Uh, yeah, I, I had it, the title for... The title annoyed me oh, as well. stupid. But I, I get it. They don't want to. It seems to be a trend, doesn't it, with these um, legacy sequels? They're not called Ghostbusters. Did it? Top Gun did it. Bad Boys have done it. Uh, I'm sure but, other films have done it. But they're putting a sub. They're putting a subtitle, a phrase that uh, has some relation to the movie, not half of a man's name. Right, it's bizarre. It's Maverick, well, like this is this is very much trying to be like Top Gun Maverick was, which is sure. the same movie again, just different it, yeah well this is what a group of suits in a room have said well they worked for top gun maverick we can't call it axel foley we can't call it axel foley someone's gone well hang on a minute wasn't there that incredibly popular youtube ringtone that was axel f that maybe that will work yeah. well on algorithms was this? yeah you know yeah that ring ding 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 ring ding 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 that one you don't know what that was not... called that's axel like some f, crazy yeah. frog or whatever right did it, did it? yeah that's crazy it. Frog. yeah crazy frog, crazy frog was... was axel f Ding, ding, ding. Oh, God, it's the most annoying thing ever. If that, if that is the fucking reason that this movie is called Beverly Hills Cop Axel F, and I'm not, now I've heard this, I bet you it is, it I'm cancelling Netflix. I don't care. It was a good, it was a good movie. I really enjoyed it. It was a ringtone it. 20 years ago. Nobody cares. Oh, but it'll God. Be that I, 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 I would put a significant amount of money on that being at least in the conversation. Because they'll be like, what do people yeah. know Axel Foley at? They don't know him as Foley. They don't know him as Axel. Oh, no, they know him as Axel F. That's what they know him as. So they'll have I put it in there. with Beverly Hills Cop again. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not a joke, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. at least it's Anyway, it's, a good, mean... it's got some funny bits, and uh, it's got s- several cameos in it, but there's one cameo which is just <laughs> random and fucking the best cameo. I was just like, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Which wow. we won't, we won't, probably won't spoil here. No, it's but... one, of the, one of the most random and best cameos. They're entirely specific. You need to have seen a completely unrelated film to get this cameo, which is <laughs> yeah. brilliant. Let's do, let's do this properly then, right? Let's okay. talk about the film objectively. Then mm. we'll do a warning spoilers and we'll talk yeah. about a couple right. of spoiler things in it. So people can skip ahead for a little bit if they want. Yes. For, uh... The bad guy is Kevin Bacon. <laughs> 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 See, that, I'll allow that one because they do that thing where it's like 
you, you're like, oh, he's obviously the bad guy. And then not, not 14 seconds later does Axel F, as we will now call him, say, <laughs> oh, that he's obviously dodgy, right? So it's, it's actually yeah, great. Yeah. I love the way it wasn't even a mystery at all. And then it's like the very next scene, they go to like that the that party and he's there with the bad goons and he's just like, yeah, I'm, I'm bad. Yeah. What are you going to mm. do? Yeah. Which is very so what... Beverly Hills Cop because they're, oh, all, yeah. they're like that in the other movies, aren't they? So... What really took me back was how one, I mean, overall, it's just way better than you would think because when I heard, you know, oh. we all heard they were doing this and you go, oh, because, you know, yeah. Eddie Murphy can be good every now and then still, like with Dolomite and um, a few other things. But then we've had we've had Coming to America, which was just horrid shit. And we've had, yeah, just like a whole bunch of garbage. He just doesn't seem to, like, have the energy. But for some reason, he, maybe it's a Han Solo situation. Uh, what's his, what's, he, no, hang on. He loves Indy Jones. Um, Harrison Ford mm-hmm. loves playing Indiana Jones, hates Han Solo. But. And maybe he likes playing Axel F because he had that. He felt more like the character more than he has in playing his other roles recently. Uh, the characters he's come the back opening, to. The opening chase, the opening with the, that useless um, police <laughs> officer was really funny in the way he's just like, I'm so glad you wanted to come to the game with me. <laughs> yeah. He's, yeah. Not, he's just casing out some bad guys. It was very mm. good. It was the perfect setup for the film. I think that opening scene was pitch perfect because it was funny. Was it was well executed. Good. It kind of gave you a re it kind of got you back into him as a character but what i really liked one of the things i really liked about it was that it wasn't just a cut and paste performance of Mm -hmm. what he did in the last beverly hills cop there's obviously age behind it so he kind of turns on the axle foliness and then there's a little bit of weariness every now and again and there's a little bit of calm and serenity and whatever yeah there's that bit there's that bit where he's going to do the shtick, and then he's just like, I can't be honest. Um, yeah. How much can't go This is the non spoiler section, right? <laughs> I don't give a shit about spoilers. We, yeah. we watch yeah. the movie. Anyway, <laughs> it's not my job. If we hadn't have seen it, we, if we hadn't have seen it, oh, we were going to do it we're professionally. Not, yes. That's not a spoiler. I think anyway, it, I think if you if you talk nah, about I'm specific things specific. inside that the film, that that's literally what a spoiler is. All right, I'll be less specific. All right, I tell you what, it was if funny. You don't it had funny it... people in it and some good action. It was very well directed. <laughs> yes. First time director, but what was really very impressive, yeah, about how it was directed was it was paced mm-hmm. very well, mm-hmm. and also I can see how a lot of people would think it's boring because it's paced like a real film, which they <laughs> don't do anymore. Right, I get you. Right, just we're gonna spoil it. So if you don't want it to be spoiled, just skip ahead a few minutes. Right, <laughs> it's fine. Fucking Let's hell. just do that. Jesus, because um, no, I agree. Well, it's quite. I think I've said this a couple of times over the past few episodes, and the films that I've liked recently the best are films that have felt like films that we watched 10, 15, 20 years ago. Or this, more, yeah. This felt like the way they used to do them when we were kids. It was. It was. It felt like a film to me. There's it not... felt like a proper film. Yeah, and there's, there is montage. obviously CG in it because there always yeah. is nowadays. But it's it's mostly shot on location with maybe some embellishments for some of the action when it's impossible shit. But I like I liked that it was um, genuinely not reliant on CD and and it wasn't you know like a Fast and Furious movie where they're flying cars up the side of a building and they bounce onto another building and then they're fine. None of that. It was very much like realistic, like the original Beverly Hills Cops, where it's not ridiculous. What what's happening is plausible, even though he's so silly and funny. Like so these things it, can tend to be like a throwback, right? But the throwback I want is not. I don't want them doing the exact same shit in the exact same outfits no. in the exact same location. I want the feel to be there, and that's what this one succeeded in doing. It, it's it got the vibe, was paced like it. a Beverly Hills Cop movie. It felt like a Beverly Hills Cop movie. It was actually, they wrote it, someone directed it, which is shocking in this day and age. <laughs> that's, mm. that someone actually tried to make a proper film for the fourth um, Beverly Hills Cop movie on fucking Netflix. Because if, yeah. if, if ever there was one you could skate through, it would be this one, right? Uh, just, to, just to interject, you know, the guy that directed it, it's Australian. Oh, gross. <laughs> Australians just seem to, to 
do all well, right. Well, they've only just got the original Beverly Hills Cop. <laughs> yeah, it's so it's very good. That's very true. Good. That's true. <laughs> brand new movie. Brand new movie over there. There's not that many <laughs> cell phones or like modern technology. All right, there's a. This is. Let's head into spoilers now. That's why I haven't heard the start. ringtone yet. We haven't got it yet. Old Axle. <laughs> um, yeah, the, we don't have mobile phones, do you? Uh, so the um, tracker that they have, it's like a mm. box about that big with a green flashing yeah. light on it. Big magnet. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, brilliant. That's exactly what I want a police tracker to look like. You yeah, know what we're yeah. going to do? We're going to make our goons specifically have a theme for no reason. We're just going to bleach all their hair and make them look real fucking weird. <laughs> And yeah. then there's that other Generic. game that's just like tattooed faces with wearing cowboy boots and shit. I'm like, this is fucking great. What it had for me, the thing, so that you got the generic villains, like the German oh, yeah. ones and then the kind of Mexican y ones. But it makes um, them stand out, though, in a way that baddies yeah. don't now. Yeah. It had one thing that I've missed in films for a long time, right? Bad guys having oh, full oh, massive oh, mansions oh. where the. <laughs> Where the yeah. heroes wander around just shooting people randomly and shoot sneaking out, yeah. in. Like, you know, like the whole Tango and Cash thing and all yeah. like that back Commando in the day. Commando yeah. like that, didn't it? You know, where he just takes on a mansion for some I'm reason. Gonna, I'm going to go the same and... mansion, surely, in all of these movies. They've just always <laughs> got the same, like, um, statues and stuff that get shot and mm. blown up. There were so many people that came in and had little tiny roles that just kind of that just did a great job. And I think there were elements that were maybe underwritten, like you had, um, like Louis Guzman came in and you kind of, he was brilliant as ever and never really popped up again. There was no well, kind like of cameo situation. Isn't yeah. It, really? but there was kind of no real resolution to that storyline, but it didn't really need it. It's because there was like, Oh, we got off. It's fine. But there was no kind of yeah. development there. But in some ways, if they do a sequel, I could imagine him coming back and popping up some way. I enjoyed that that was kind of like what would have been the strip joint in, in an old Beverly yeah. Hills Cop movie, but it's it's not. It's just this weird place where he's just singing karaoke. <laughs> yeah. And he everyone has, has to listen to him. He had Surge pop up, and then that was a reel today. Well, they made with... a joke about that, didn't they? Doesn't just Ryan Hall say, has he taken you to a strip joint? Yeah. yeah. And they're just like, uh, no. <laughs> One of the best little things I thought was when um, uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt was like, oh, yeah, I've got, I know who you are. I've got your – I've got one from – what was it? It's 84, one from 87. Yeah. And then what What did he say? Like He's like 93, and then he's like, ah, yeah, well, not my best not my best hour or whatever, like making yeah, fun of the best third work. film. Yeah, I thought, I thought it really – it had little nods to things, and it did – it put Judge freaking Reinhold on a pedestal a little bit, like showing him on his intro silhouetted from the back, and you're like, "Oh, it's that fucking guy." He's meant to be the dweeb, but like, don't like don't treat him like that. Well, then he but still is a dweeb. So he sure is a bit of a still puts his badge oh, up in the Billy. gunfight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, just go, they thought... just fall straight back into that, and he's just like Billy. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I like the way, like James said, they sort of they had moved forward. They weren't well, in legacy sequels. I think they fall apart for me as soon as it's like, oh, great. You know, like, people change their clothing in 40 years. That sort of stuff fucking annoys me when they're like, oh, I've got my jacket, I've got the same jacket on, I always wear the, I've got the same pair of jeans. It, the Jurassic Park effects, like, mm. I was wearing the fucking hat and a pair of jeans, like a blue See, shirt. I like that Axel wore the jacket in this because it's what he wears when he leaves his hometown isn't but it, it wasn't the jacket right no you know different. what i mean though like yeah. detroit and it's just like it, i'll it, give him a sports jacket a clever way, if, it, if it's the same jacket and it, it like and we sit on it and it goes do 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 and we sit do, there for do, five do. seconds so you know like that stuff and always a piss i like that billy was a, a a private investigator and then thingy uh tagger is he called tagger mm -hmm. <laughs> such a cop name is like the police chief which mm. makes sense it makes sense his their little thing i think they obviously minimized those guys it was maybe one of the things that didn't entirely work for me it was like stop yelling at your wife this isn't working um with Taggart, you know and then actually seeing her and i'm like this is odd it just feels weird but they they obviously they're quite old so they gave them like a just very small amount of screen time yeah um but i thought their thing like if for the characters that we know, that's a big fucking deal for Taggart not to believe Billy. 
but that's huge. Mm, that's yeah. not, and obviously it was, but like, I don't know, it was, I thought it was a little underplayed and maybe a little underwritten, but you know, we're, fo- yeah, we're well, following Axel, the, so the, it's fine. The thrust is, is Axel and his daughter and all that stuff works really well. And I enjoyed that he tries his shtick, you know, when she's there, you know, they go mm. to places and then she just interjects and does it better. Because he's kind of like out of touch a little bit now, and it's not quite working like the way he does his, his, his thing, which was good because it's not just exactly the same thing again. Yeah. And it is like it's the continuing adventures of Axel Foley, which Olay. I like. I just liked, I enjoyed, enjoyed it. I would but actually watch like another one if they did more. That's the thing good, that I'm shocked by. Character. He wasn't like just goofing around. It was, you know, just like the. the cause the original Beverly Hills Cop's like that, where he's doing funny, jokey stuff, but then he'd be like, oh, uh, he's dead. Mm. And yeah. that's why it's I'm it's got pretty hardcore it. shit in it. It's the most fun I've watched, had watching a film since, I would say, Roadhouse. <laughs> um, <laughs> Roadhouse was good. Yeah. <laughs> no, I really enjoyed it. Right I genuinely, there. genuinely, really, really just, enjoyed this film. Well, the thing is, is like, what do people expect? Like, Because it's <clears> not <throat> getting great reviews and people criticising really? it. And it's just like... What, what do you expect? It's Beverly Hills Cop. It's just, it's just a bit of fluff, other, really. Other than making this in, in 1980, I don't know, unless even we went back in time and they made it two years after the second one and it was not what the third one was, right? Bar doing that, there's no way that they could have made a better version, of much better version of this in 2024, I would say. Mm. Tighten no. a few things up, maybe a few takes extra on some of the lines and that's about it. And he steals that helicopter, and then he's just like, "Why can't you fight it?" I thought you were part of it. He's like, "I crashed." Yeah, yeah. And then it's like, "Shit!" Joseph Gordon-Levitt's not in enough films, is he? Really, I like I agree. him. He's good. He's, he's one of those good. dudes that probably just does what he wants to do. Oh, he's, yeah, he's never been bad. Have a bit of a laugh. Mm. He's our favorite until he's not. You know, who knows? <laughs> you say that about famous people, and then it comes out that they're like maniacs in some way. Yeah, sometimes, I, doesn't it? I think he's yeah. generally all right. What, he, he I think he seems like a genuine with, dude. with his crowdsourcing like art projects. It's oh, like, get off yeah. that shit, and you'd be just stick yeah. to the films. But, but you know, we all got to do something. He's really good he? in it. I like when he they is. go to look at that house, and the the realtor <laughs> lady is just like <laughs> the yeah, ugliest fucking house funny. you've ever seen. That was a funny bit. I like that. Yeah, that was really good scene. She and then when they don't, he's just like, "We're not buying this house. It's fucking shit." Whatever he says, we just walk out. It's fucking ugly. Mm. She no, was good great. film. Eight stars. Think, yeah, yeah. I was going to say ten. Ten stars. But realistically, it's kind of for me. I think it's like an eight out of ten film, four out of five yeah. film. But ten stars. Oh yeah, but no, ten stars. Ten stars. I think for a Netflix job, I mean, it's probably it, one of their best. It's almost like done. it's free, isn't it? Because <clears throat> everyone's got Netflix, so, and you know, we were just having a few <laughs> beers, and we just put it on, and it was like, hey, this is great. It would have been better in a cinema. I think it would have played better in a cinema. Oh, it's criminal yeah. that that's not in the cinema. Everyone's dad would have gone and seen that. It would have been another... I think it would have been another... Because that's why Maverick succeeded so hard is because everyone's dad went and saw it, right? Mm-hmm. So if they, they could have... Every, all, everybody loved Top Gun. And the same not for sure. Top Gun. Everybody loved Beverly Hills Cop. At this point, though, how many years removed are we from 1984? Well, I know, because I was born in it fucking 40 years. 40, yeah. So there's, at this point, you could get you, dad, and grandpa, and you're all off to that thing, and it makes a packet. I really think it could have done all right. But, yeah. I think the world we live in, unfortunately. No. Anyway, that's that. Have we got anything else that we have watched this week, either collectively or not? I watched, oh, I say I, we watched uh, the Weird Al movie with Harry Potter. as Weird Al. (laughs) Okay. Do you remember that uh, Walk Hard movie, the one with mm, John C. Reilly? Dewey Cox. Mm-hmm. It's, it's that, but obviously pertaining to be real because Weird Al's a real person. But yes. it's completely unreal. It's just yeah. so stupid. It's got some really funny bits in it. Harry Potter, uh, Daniel Radcliffe, is excellent. Like, really genuinely good in it. He's underrated uh, in oh, general, I think. so funny. But it is, it's funny or die, and it is like a funny or die skit extended to 90 minutes. Mm-hmm. So you do get a little bit, but then it takes a turn with Madonna, which is just brilliant. <laughs> She's just who <laughs> says Madonna in it? It's um, Thingy from Westworld. What's her oh. name? 
Even you know Rachel I mean? Wood. Main, Evan, Evan yeah, Rachel Wood. She is, she is, she's great because she just wants him <laughs> to parody one of her songs so that she gets the Weird Al bump because basically he's the most famous person on the planet. <laughs> That's the conceit of the film. When he parodies an artist's song, they, they, their sales go up. So she's desperate for him to do that, and she just does it. Does it she gets him clocked on on booze, and she's a real bad influence. And then it ends up with them going to Pablo Escobar, and it's just <laughs> excellent. Uh, but also just so fucking stupid. That's what you want, though, from a the, and it, when he's when a little like... kid, and he just want and he and he just wants he just wants an accordion. <laughs> oh dear. When I what I really appreciated about that, and I haven't seen it, I've seen bits of it, but um. What I appreciated about it was that they kept the, like, everyone played it completely straight in the marketing and stuff to the point where people were like, oh, it's a Weird Al biopic, like, for real. And it's not till people saw the film that the word got around that, oh, no, it's completely fucking batshit and it's all made up. I thought that was great. Yeah. Madonna has him assassinated. I mean, it's just... <laughs> yeah. it's excellent. Oh, James, I think, I think this is this week's must-watch film, mate. Eh? You know the ones yeah, that we yeah, never yeah. actually watched. Really, right? really yeah. funny bits in it, and his and his mom and dad are hilarious because they just don't want, they want him to work at the factory. <laughs> maybe we need <laughs> maybe really we good. need to start an open channel watch list, which is just all the films that we said we were going to watch. Well, what didn't we watch well, we for this didn't. week? There was Hi, the, fucking there no. was some Popeye, Popeye, and, uh, and <laughs> yeah. Bugsy Malone. Actually, and I think I, I, think I looked Malone. it up, and it's not even. A, it wasn't even. No. Like, there's no way for me to watch it. So. I don't think there's much demand for watching Popeye, to be honest, <laughs> in the world. From Robin Williams Popeye. I'm not yeah. sure it's worth them releasing that on on physical media. I've got it on DVD to a streamer. But... <laughs> yeah. yeah, true. I just watched Poltergeist about I don't know an hour ago. Fucking good movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know what for, but I was, well, I was maybe doing something. I was like, oh, I'm going to skim through this. Where, where's the bit I need to see? And then I just watched the whole movie because once that movie's on, you can't, you can't not watch no. it. Amazing. Do you ever do that where you like click onto a movie on TV and you go, oh, I've not watched this in a while. So we did it um, with Clear and Present Danger, which is like the Jack Ryan Harrison Ford mm. movie. Well, instead of watching Clear and Present Danger, we we've watched Patriot Games, and then we're going to now watch Clear and Present Danger because they're yeah, good right. movies. They're good movies. Harrison yeah. and Jack Ryan are the best ones. They're really good. Everyone well, talks just about makes you... Red October, but I don't think that's as good as those ones. I think that's what live to air TV is now. It's like it reminds you of shit, and then you go, "Ooh, I wonder if I can stream this and its many sequels." Yeah. <laughs> so you should, we, it was like halfway through, and we were like, "Oh yeah, mm. watch watch that." That happened to me. I watched half of Blown Away a few weeks ago because it was just on TV. I'm like, oh, I remember this shit. Because yeah. at the time, that was the that was the biggest biggest explosion ever done on film, right? The one at the oh, end really? where they blow up the what's it, a oil tanker or something? Massive boat. Because yeah. Tommy Lee, the Tommy Lee Jones, explosion? is it was that for it was that for ages, and then they overtook it sometime in the 2000s or whatever. Um, oh, that what reminds me of something. Demolition I'm write... Man, because that's pretty big. They blow up that building in Demolition I'm going to type something I have to tell you guys after this. I had a great shower idea. Don't say it while you're typing it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, and then, then um, just the usual watching a bit more Sweet Tooth. That's good. Oh, yeah. Watching still a bit doing... more Bear. That's still good. What you up to on Bear? Uh, just the second episode. Because watch one <sighs> That's, but that's that's just outrageous. You're not going to be done it's before outrageous. Christmas. I like to savor it. I don't, yeah. So what? I'm savoring. You it. watched it all, we've James. Bear. We've got that. We've got Presumed Innocent. We're watching that, and then we watch Kojak. I just <laughs> love Kojak. Uh, He's so English five, and so old. It's outrageous. Five. I've not really. Yeah, I've not really watched much this week. Watched the election. That's been. Oh yeah, that was a fun. Oh yeah, shit popped off over there. Hey, well we. It yeah. didn't really. It just seems like it did, but it didn't really. When you, I mean, when you, but... when you, when you boil it down to the numbers and the fact that they're still essentially right wing. Well, know, sure, but we'll not, we'll soft, not talk about that too cent- much. Then. Oh, we won't. Okay, centre oh, right, right. centre right. I was going to get into it. What else have we been doing, James? Have you watched anything? Matt's had a bit of a ramble. What have you? What have you been doing? No, really. I was no. No, I've no, been a bit. Nothing. We kind of watched. What have I watched? We watched a few Netflix documentaries on um, 
that we go through themes with documentaries, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. recently we seem to have been bouncing through these ones that are around kids that get dragged off by the parents to these camps, you know, these kind of behavioral oh. camps. Oh, uh, okay. So there's some absolute mental stuff there. Yeah, that sounds He's like absolute that. Right in the, uh, absolute right in the Henshaw house over there. Wow, we. Yeah, well, my <laughs> favorite program at the minute is um, Barbecue Showdown on Netflix. So Barbecue oh. Showdown, if you don't know, it's like um, it's an, essentially Great British Bake Off on a barbecue. But barbecue. So it's American. Ah, okay. Love it. Love I it. can. I'll, you know what? I don't know because I've not watched it, but I feel like I probably wouldn't like it because it's American. And a lot of American TV like that I don't like because of the way it's 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 five to ten minutes of them saying what's coming up in the episode with little quick sound bites. Mm, yeah. Then nothing for a minute. Then they might show that that they were going to show, and then they say next time. It's oh, ten no. minutes of content stretched out to forty five minutes, and I want to blow my own head off every no, this time is I watch half TV an hour like long. that. Each episode's half an hour long, and it's quite inchy. Okay. So yeah. I, I would say it's not that. That's bad. why over there, the English stuff seems to do well, I think. So they love the Bake Off over there. Because I was it's say. a proper TV program where it's just the stuff happens. Yeah. The reason you know? that Bake Off is massive is because there's it's not edited in that way, and there's like there's an uh, element of like genuineness to it. Like the, everything feels, these people feel like actual people who are either having a great time or a slightly tough time, but it yeah. never gets mean. It never, it's never edited into like quick fire, crazy shit. The worst thing that happens is someone drops a fucking parfait or something and, and like, oh no, they've, it's a bit of a mess, but we'll still taste it and we'll say what we can say about it. There's none of that, like, and there's none of that shit, like you were saying, Matt, with the, the, the we've got to constantly, because you're not actually watching this, you're on your phone. Uh, we've got to constantly say what just happened and then what's, what's going to happen. Next, and then, yeah. Oh, gross. And he goes, da, da, yeah. da, da, da. like ones like your maths and stuff like that. They're just, honestly, it's like pulling teeth. I can't yeah. stand it. No, Barbecue Showdown doesn't do any of that. The only thing it would, I would say is well, much good. more aligned to Bake Off. The only thing it doesn't really do, because it doesn't have time, because the episodes are only like half an hour each, it doesn't dive into the um, contestants as much. But it's very much rock up. This is what we're doing today. There is a little bit of that American kind of jeopardy kind of things that they throw in. Mm. So you have to dun, say dun. that with a yeah, that kind of tongue in cheek. I like it. I think it's good. It's I get into it. Um and I don't like things like Married at First Sight and um Is It Cage and stuff yes, like it. that. I don't like that. as well, all that stuff. Because yeah. sort of. that's where yeah. you're right, Matt, that's how that stuff's put together. Matthew Ferguson. Do you have any questions uh, that we might be able to answer for the fine oh, folks that Jolly. listen to this podcast? <laughs> yeah, bloody hell. Right, so... Yeah, right. Oh, while you're doing that, I can say this. Hey, kids out there, just so, in case we've forgotten, this man here, Gamebot by Flory, who is me, is now up at gamebot.mrflory.com for pre-order. Um, the pre-order will just stay live until the thing is real. So if you feel like you need a little man... To sit on your desk, go and do that. Thank you. Uh, James Hobbs Hobson, Jimothy. Yes, we know asks, him. If you were to make a gig poster, what band would it be for and what would it look like? We're not going to tell you what it would look like because you want to rip it off. Yeah. Um, bastard. Cheeky including bastard. Including James. This is aimed at all three of us. Oh, and you could and you can do that, James, because you don't actually have to make it. You can just have the idea, which is fine. I'm not going to tell you what it looks like. I can answer this immediately. Ideas aren't free, dickhead. I can also tell you what it was going to look like because I did it. Um, the one I would have done, which got taken away, snatched from my grasp, was my third Metallica poster, which is going to be for a Melbourne show that I was going to. And there was a little bit of talk there with a the like, ooh. Could we could we somehow get a little uh, get a little fist bump from the boys backstage or something like that? And then it all got taken away because it was in late twenty nineteen, early twenty twenty, I think. So that all got fucked in the ass, didn't it? That's not cool. But I did the uh -huh. concept; it was all approved and everything, and we were ready to go. And then gone. Boo. I want to do a gig poster for one of those metal bands that I like, like Anthrax or a rock Anthrax, band yeah. like. ACDC or something, and you can imagine what that would look like. So, yeah, 
You've done one gig poster before, haven't you, Matt? It had a bike with a balloon on it. Was that you? You did that yes, many years ago. Who was it for? Do you remember? I don't know. It was like a friend of a friend situation. It wasn't like oh. a proper, proper thing. Uh, the funny thing with that is one of the kids' friends' parents has that poster on their wall, and they were like, Did you, are you? Are you, are you, are you? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I do other stuff, though. You know, like, Gig posters frustrate me, right? Um, <laughs> for a couple of reasons. I ain't going to pay enough money, so it's not happening, let's be yeah, honest. That, so they would frustrate yeah. me. I don't know the how anyone one. works in that. Yeah. The best gig posters tend to be for bands that I don't like. So a lot of artists that I like tend to work on Fish or Pearl Dave Damn. Matthews Band. You're <laughs> yeah. welcome to like them. Not my cup of tea. I like, don't you like Fish? Oh, man. Like Bella Grace did amazing, <sighs> and it's not a band, but she did the Wimbledon stuff, which she did an awesome job at. It looks great. Um, I don't know. So if, for me, it'd be looking at bands that are my favourite bands. So it'd be doing something for like Gaslight Anthem or Offspring or Weezer. Um, you know, Weezer, I can't really recall seeing any gig posters that I've liked for Weezer. Um, Has anyone done well, a Crazy Taxi X-esque poster for The Offspring? They must have, right? Uh, they must have done. Like, and if they haven't, that's a million dollar it. idea right now. I don't now. follow yeah. any of it. I'm not in that world. It's like kind of impenetrable because it's very much like, how do you say, hipster dominated. Uh, and I'm just well, not a, a hip person. It is. It is. I mean, yeah, I feel like it's impenetrable because it's got to be a screen print and it's got to be this and it's got to be that. Oh, I think at this point like, it's like two massive companies that have ruined the industry and they just like throw people through there oh, yeah. and mm. fuck them over, right? It's just a big churn, but it's like anything. When it probably started, it was cooler when it was just grassroots and yeah. fans yeah. were just like, should we try and do something? But I don't, I don't know. Think you know, I think people much. like... The people that do a great job at it are Drew Millwood always does a great job. Tom Newell always does a great job. Luke Priest always does a great job. Daniel Danger. Um, He's done. Daniel Danger. I think um, who's been doing stuff recently? Uh, Bella's been doing some stuff recently. She did some awesome Pearl Jam stuff. I'm probably missing some. But I, think, I think like the creativity that seems to come out from the artists is really cool because they obviously can just do a cool thing. Instead of it having to be well, commercial art in, in that I way, think yeah. the, which, I is think a, the which is appealing. I think the market around it seems to be, what if you just made a really sick art print and then you slap the name on it and then you have two things to sell? Because I know with the Metallica yeah. ones, and I don't know, I, I'm, sure I can, I'm sure this is fine. No one gives a fuck. I'm never get doing those again. But you can, it's perfectly fine after that. You got your APs for the Metallica stuff, which was great. But then you can sell that. That you just take the name off and sell it at any point. Yeah. They don't care. So they never want to own any of the artwork itself. Um, and you see most of those guys that are successful and work like mostly in that space. That's got to be the only way that you can keep going because the, as far as I know, the pay from that. And I and we got a good deal like um, Tim Doyle from um, Nakatomi. There, it's, he I worked with on those and uh, and on um, what did I do is uh, Kings of Leon is one uh, one as well. And he got us a good deal by all reports, and it was still shit compared to, <laughs> compared to like some of the stuff we're the, doing now. You know, the interesting thing for me personally is I thrive on the constraints of like commercial art for like a film, oh. and I and I love the sort of challenge of making a poster for that film and making it evoke that film. Whereas when mm. you've got a complete freedom with a for a for a gig poster, I wouldn't. I don't think I would thrive as much because I've, I I I really enjoy that that challenge of making a film for a poster. Well, I think you're more of like you know this is mean? why it's hard to describe mm. you because you, as much as you're a, an illustrator, you're actually got the mindset of a graphic designer. I've always thought, even yeah. though you're not trained in that, you just you like to solve the visual problem, and that's what design is. Illustration is, um, I don't know communicating through imagery or something like it's diff it's different but yeah i think we're similar in that way as well i like to do that some constraint is good like if they say like that's why i like i did like the metallica one because they were like you do anything you want skulls you just gotta yeah, it's metal. gotta have it's gotta have like skulls that's and why shit something in it. like kiss i could do because i would know what i would want to do right you know 
mm. just they have imagery to, to cup, work off. You don't like just do like a. And... I wouldn't do like a. I, well, you could do a squirrel in a park, but it would have kiss makeup. <laughs> Or a camper van, Actually, a camper van, yeah. or something, but it's got to have like yeah. flames shooting out of the fucking tires yeah. and stuff. An ice cream man with uh, kiss maker <laughs> on. Yeah, just with the ice cream. Yeah, just Ooh. handing out ice creams and wearing kiss maker. You've um, done it. You've come up with the perfect gig post concept, James. <laughs> oh my! But I, gosh. I think there's some fun stuff out there. Like for, one of the things that still it piques my interest and in, it kind of got me interested in art. I think I've said this before. Is that is both the Green Day Dookie stuff, but then the Frank Kozik um, offspring things for Americana? Mm. You know, they were they were somewhat iconic. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Next I just question. found out right like then that he did that. So there you go. John mm. G. Grifters United. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Says, as um, the Flory vinyl, I guess he means the toy. Is inspired by 90s video, 90s <laughs> well, blah, quality <laughs> craftsmanship. Uh, They're supposed to come off. They're supposed I'll to come off. again. Edit this bit out, kid. Right. As <laughs> Mr. Flory vinyl is inspired by 90s video gaming, what games of the 90s do you have fondest memories of and would you like to create retro art for? <sighs> you guys go first. <laughs> Because <laughs> I might go for uh, Do- Doom, Doom, Quake. I was a PC gamer, so those I, I would. I wish like it's not though, is it? It's the best. Doom is like the best fucking game. So yeah, that that's what I would do. Shareware, put some shareware in there. Pay the first three levels Quake. or whatever. My dad Are brought them? the floppy disk home. I remember he brought the floppy disk home because that's what Doom was. It was like a floppy disk that went round, and then. We, what, we can we talk about up. that? Because so what an cool. absolute fucking genius way of... Because they just made that game, right? They're like, it's John Carmack, it's John What's-His-Dick. The, so they've got the art guy and the absolute nerd, like, genius programmer and then a few yep. other people in the room, right? They just made this sick game off the back of Wolfenstein, added a bunch of stuff to it. And they were like, right, firstly, it's going to be downloadable, which was insane because no one had ever done that. Um, or no one had done it to that extent. But also the shareware thing where they just like sent out free discs that had the first, what was it, the first third of the game? It was the first like zone. World, had the yeah. Different bits that you could go in it. Yes, but they were like so confident that their game was so fucking good that people would want to pay for the rest of it. So they just said, because everyone had the first disc of Doom in their house. I don't know where it came from. I don't know where we got it or how we got it, but it was there. Doom. And it was just in, what an amazing, and they made a fucking fortune off that game just to bet on yourself in that way is just awesome to me it holds up still though now today when you play doom now it is mm. still a really just awesome experience to play and very cool. and it's cool sci-fi with demons and shit it's like wild that they've not managed to make a good movie of that absolutely yeah. wild i, yeah. I think yeah crazy but back back in the day so i used to get Gaming magazines, so console magazines, game magazines, and stuff. PC Gamer was my joint of choice. It was like, well, it was game. I used to get Games Master, and um, there was another one I can't remember the name of, but it was, uh, but they were great because they had all these illustrations. They must have, well, they did. They because I found out obviously we're friends with Greg Staples. Greg used to work in uh, on those magazines and do illustrations for them mm. and stuff like that. A lot of the illustrations that they had in those that weren't in the game, they were just an artist's impression of what Toe Jam and Earl are doing, shooting <laughs> someone in the face or whatever. It was so they were always really cool, both when Jim and all of that. Um, I don't know. So, what I'd, uh, for me, we, I, we've spoken about this before, like Half Life was a huge game for me, but before then, it's going back to all of those console stuff. There's loads of those console games and PC games that had all of this awesome not concept art but like promotional art yeah, the box it. art that promised cool. the world and then it was just an and eight, the, a, a eight bit yeah thing the big and the, the big box for the pc games as well that oh, you walked in that massive yeah. quake i remember the quake box i was just like oh my god i need to have this thing oh man i, I think i know it had Quake 2 had coloured lighting. I remember how excited me and my friends were the fact that it had like coloured lighting. It was like, ooh, it's death. What was it called? The the graphics card oh, mm. that you had to buy to run it. Oh my. 
Brilliant. PC Gamer, though, back to the magazines. You know who used to work for them? Is it Karen Gillan? Many people. Karen Gillan and um, Charlie Brooker used to oh, write yeah. reviews. Yeah, yeah. Oh. And they were always really funny, ridiculous reviews. And That's obviously cool. they went on to be very successful people. Yeah, some of those, all those magazines, like the, um, oh, what's the, what was the big, what was the biggest one? I, for some reason, it's just like I'm blanking on it, but the big US one. And, but it always had like a, the writers for it were like characters within the magazine and they'd have all these like yeah. little asides and like goofy mm. shit. And it was just so entertaining to read, especially as a kid. And, and the way that like games were, like there was no, we had no internet. Um, if you were going to get a tip or a trick, it was going to be in the back of one of those. And you'd be like, what? I can fucking go down this pipe in Mario? What are you talking about? How have I not done this I, playing it for over it, and over again? Yeah, getting, getting some cheat codes as well. You get like yeah. a cheat code. God mode, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Completely breaks there's the a game. Documentary. There's, a doc- there's a documentary on Netflix about the guys that make Game Genie. Can you remember Game Genie? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, it, it, the cart went in, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because we used to hire it thing. from the, the video store because you could hire your yeah. NES games, but you could also hire a Game Genie as well. And it came with a book of like codes and shit. That was great. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a fun little documentary. Okay. I might watch that. I like the sound yeah. of that. Do you, ever, do you ever watch any of the no clip stuff on YouTube? You should because they're very good. I remember back no, in when he started they did Half Life, a full documentary about Half Life, and mm. it interviews everyone. Really? And they did the new Doom. The, the stuff on the new Doom is absolutely a brilliant documentary. What's that called? No clip. No clip. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll give it a recommend. Go. Do recommend. Uh, I mean, I could go on about like. I've I've just made something that's very loosely inspired by certain parts of 80s and 90s gaming. But, like, I mean, I'd do any of it. Just I'm a massive Nintendo kid. I think we'd probably know that by now. Um, So I'd do – if I could – that's probably – you know, Matt's had a dream to – he's like, I want to do the key art that's in a cinema for a big release, right? I – if I could just work for Nintendo – with or for Nintendo one day on one small shitty little thing. (laughs) Like, I don't care what it is. Just let me do it. Yeah. I'd love to do it. I would go as far as to say, I think computer game art and music art had more of an influence on me doing this kind of thing than perhaps what film poster right. art did. That's interesting. Um, so for me, it's it's um, that computer game stuff had a massive influence because obviously I had started out in the games industry. But yeah, I think comics was the was the thing mm. that really kicked me off talking yeah. about in spain it's for spain <laughs> spawn <laughs> spawn. Spawn. in spain spawn. I love I spawn. Spain. Spain. <laughs> uh, yeah, AD but, was huge there was a cover there's a cover yeah. that i'll always remember um and it's slain sideways on i think it's a glenn fabry cover it's not glenn fabry it's um Bisley, so Simon Bisley. Oh, cover. Bisley stuff was the best, and it was just it was a white the background. coolest artist. Do you know Bisley, right? I do you know, like that's the that's the weirdest thing because, and maybe it was just me and where I like was, but we didn't have the 2000 AD Judge Dread. None of it. I've never seen broke any out, of it though, until you guys did... gave it to me when we started doing. Like you put me on to it, and we started doing. Bisley stuff. broke out though. He did like Batman and shit. His artwork all was the coolest. Yeah, all the Lobo stuff was him. He was like the hmm. coolest. So he did all that airbrushing style paint, and none of it made any sense. You know, in the nineties, like your Lee Field stuff. It's like yeah. that. it's all part of the same puzzle where they were like, you know what? We're not going to give a fuck about anatomy or things being. <laughs> uh, correct from frame to frame we're just going to draw the coolest looking thing we can and that yeah. involves a giant gun loads of pouches and six muscles where there should only be one muscle yeah. like muscles on their head can you remember yeah. that time we went to can you remember that time we went to a pub with bisley after that co- yes, after Jess he comic was convention. having he was having beer with chasers whiskey yeah, with challenging it. everyone to arm wrestles and then he fell through the sink in the toilet yeah so, and then the comics he attract showed healthy up, people, don't they? <laughs> he showed up to the convention the next day on time and drew a load of pictures of Batman for people. <laughs> it was fine, but he was like literally drinking whiskey and beer and just like, <laughs> never met us before. It. And he was like the nicest guy ever. He was, yeah, it was so nice. It was really, yeah. yeah That's yeah. cool. Well, we should, like, I love you. I love that fucking Star Wars picture you've got there. That's great. 
And, then, and I was like, do you want, do you want one? And he was like, I'll, I'll buy one, I'll buy one. I was like, you can just have it, this way. Yeah. Well, co- well, comics guys are famously well paid as well, so I bet she's ro- <laughs> absolutely rolling in it. I think mm. he was one of the ones that got rich. Oh, good. You know, like life, life field because he was massive. We've had some a, really the covers artist more than a, than. Well, if you create a, if you create something of your own at some point, you can do it right, right? Isn't that the yeah. only way to really do it? Like a Mike Vignola? I don't, or... I don't think he ever did, did he? He just did he not? not sure. Literally just drew crazy shit. We've been quite yeah. lucky, really. I think Joe past... Pineapples is like him, isn't it? <laughs> From yeah. ABC Warriors. There's yeah. a character called Joe Pineapples. You know the robot in the new Star Wars game. Big oh, the robot little... with a trench coat. Oh, the big robot. And the big gun. He's got a big gun and a trench coat, and he's with the, the, the main character. There's, there's loads of art of it in the okay. Star Wars game. That is Joe Pineapples. Like, if I was 2000 AD, I'd be like... Hmm. Interesting. Gotcha. Anyway. That's cool. Any more questiones there? We're gonna do, what, do you want to do one more if we've got any? Oh, I put my phone down. One more. Oh, Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Right, mm. Rob Mohan, mm-hmm. who is uh, a long-term customer and a, and a stand-up person, uh, of the items on display behind each of you, oh, which oh. is your favourite, and why? Oh, well, how much can you see? I don't know. I know which mine is, so we're all good. You know what? Yeah, we're just going to turn around and look for a while. Or go, Matt. Then do yours. Hot rod. The what the red special red one, the original one. I like the cartoon one more, but the original one that I've got because I've had it for so long is my favourite. And as you can see, I have a little bit of a Transformers oh, thing yeah. going on. Mm. What about you, Jimmy? It's hard. Um, so I've got the Ghostbusters, the real Ghostbusters stuff. I love those. They're great. Yeah, but they're I'm not good. they're not the original ones. They do have the original Ecto one. I do yeah. have the original figures, but they're in in wrapped up securely in a way because I don't want them to fade. That's why I like that hot rod best because it's like the original. So. <laughs> yeah. So I would say of what I've got behind me, um I've got I don't know whether you can see, I've got the um Batmobile. Yeah. Oh yeah. The um the eighty nine one. Yeah. I mean it's it doesn't yeah, look like say that's uh, Batman can fit in it though. He looks a bit big. <laughs> that's not that's not the one that from that line, Matt. Did it, did the Batmobile get shrunk or something? Because oh, oh, they did this. I'm sca- taking the piss this. because you've got that big animated one next to it. Yeah, they did the scaled down version. But um, there's so many. They did another version. Boring today. They did another version of this. Um, that you could get a plastic shell. You know the armor. Mm. Oh, oh, cool. Oh, yeah. Shield, but that Best. is that's, that's the you know, the, the, I remember 4, 000... the first. I remember the first time I watched Batman 1989 and me thinking that when it stops in front of him and he says shields was the coolest thing I'd ever seen in my entire <laughs> life. I was just like, Holy shit, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Ever. It was, it was pretty rad. You know, the the speaking of overpriced toys, the f- Fucking fifty thousand dollar Hot Toys one six scale Batmobile, which wouldn't fit into your house. I'm oh, pretty it sure like... it has the armor, and it's the same. Actually, the same thing. It just like a fucking thing, plastic thing, goes over it. <laughs> like, really? They couldn't figure out how to do it. I'm pretty sure. I'm, anyway, I'm gonna revive one of my favorite things that I've got in my office. Is um, you can't see it because it's not behind me, so it's not a direct answer. Is is this guy? Um. Is it a little oh, it's a Boba Fett mug? <laughs> so my, so my dad got me this for my tenth birthday. Oh, so you it's kept been. It. I have. It's been on every. Um. So yeah, nineteen ninety. Oh no, it wouldn't be ten. Oh, then. my favorite thing on the, on the desk. If we're doing desks at the moment is uh, my cherry coat robot, which oh, I actually yeah. have had. I've had that like forever. It's it's like knackered, like the. Ring pulls broken, but when you turn it into the can, the can, yeah, right, the can. <clears throat> I don't know if I can do it. I can't do it on, on camera. Uh, anyway, it's the can. <laughs> Say try it. And uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna break it. Aren't I? That's not. Yep. I'm not transforming. I've had long, this for forty time. years and it's still going. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's getting very brittle. It's all like yellow. Oh and, yeah. Um. Anyway, Ooh. you pull the ring pull to turn it into the robot, and it like then it pops open. Oh, it's it's spring loaded. Here's a bit of an addendum to that question, then. Mm. Oh, sorry, you haven't showed us, have you? Or did I miss oh, it? Oh no, I pulled something out of my cabinet that no one can see, so I'm cheating as well. But I keep going back. There's some shout-outs. I, my pink Game Boy that the boys got me for my birthday earlier this year. There's like my That's copy cool. of Aladdin Sane vinyl over there. You, you probably can't see it. it. Was Dad's? Yeah, that is pretty sick. So then, yeah, when it works, it's really cool because it's broken. It's scaring me. <laughs> it's it, it doesn't work because it's so old. I've got I've got another one that does work. Yeah, they did other. Um, there's normal Coke too, right? And and yeah, that's like the other one I've got. I've, I've got the box for that as well. It's got the really cool box. Anyway. So something that I go back to all the time has been, I just look at it over there and I go, fuck, that's like the best thing they've ever done, is the Japan, my copy of Japanese oh, Super box. Mario 2. Oh. Is all fluoro pink. They called it Super Mario USA, if I can get it right there. Ooh, and pink. their boxes are just so teeny tiny and Japanese. And it's the fucking best. Like that's what their that's what their NES cartridges look like, and they're all colourful. It's almost as if there yeah. was some inspiration recently from that for something else that someone made with <laughs> coloured colourful cartridges. But that's one of my things that I can't. Every time I go past it, I just stop and looking at that's fucking sick. We need to think of a film that we can do on pink VHS. Don't worry, I've don't worry, I've got plenty. <laughs> I got, that's all I think about now is just what we can do with it on VHS. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Barbie, let's do Barbie. Here's a, here's a question for both of you then, spinning on it this head. What's one thing that you'd like to add to your collection that you just haven't quite got round to yet? So it has to be something reasonable. It has to be something okay. that you could get. I've got one straight like away. A... Go for it. I, so that cabinet over there has my original Game Boy. It has my brother's clear Game Boy. It has like all my Nintendo shit, right? A few other things. Copy of Mario 1, 2, and 3 on NES. It has a 64, a Super Nintendo, a GameCube, a bunch of controllers and shit. I don't have an NES. What I Fun. want, and the reason is, so here, you, you think your stuff was, earlier was boring, James. Here's some really boring shit that no one cares about. So in some, so any, the NES released, right? And in some territories or whatever, Mattel did the, um, I guess, the distribution of it. So it actually says, you know, like there's a flap on the front that says Nintendo Entertainment System in red lettering. Mm -hmm. On the, all, well, almost all the Australian ones, it says Mattel version below it, which is what we most likely had as a kid. But in my mind palace, it doesn't have that on it. So I don't want that. I want a normal, proper one. So I have to buy a US one most likely. So I need myself an NTSC NES that isn't yellowing, which is also a problem. So that's why mm. I don't leach them currently. I've seen people do that. But it go, all the plastic goes more brittle and it can sometimes know, like yeah. change color again. So I'd rather just, so, if, you, I, if you can find a late model one, they don't have the fire retardant stuff in them that causes that to happen. So there yeah. are some that don't go yellow, which is what I want. It's very specific. I know. Okay. How much Cur do you go for Currently, the only thing I want currently, um, just right now, because it changes all the time, obviously, because I'm always wanting more shit. Yeah, I don't want that. I want, um, <laughs> I want a, 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 the swoop because I've got the, yeah, you know, the Hasbro Dinobots, and I've got the G1 Dinobots there. And then once I've got swoop, I've got all the Dinobots. Which is you, you, that's that's any day now, right? Because they've just they yeah, just it should be coming. Uh, people are getting them, so yeah, I should get it soon. That's why I say it because I'm like I'm excitedly expecting it, and yeah, that's one. Yeah, that's but how much is that? One hundred and thirty pounds. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like for the one that I, the last one I wanted that I was gonna buy was like three hundred and fifty Aussie bucks, so just a little bit over that. But it's got to be bang on. The thing is, I think I can get away with it. I'm just gonna you find the right. Working. I don't care about working. I just want it to look perfect. And I don't need yeah. controllers. I don't need power plugs. So we'll see. One day I'll have one, but it's got to be exactly what I want. And it's there's a lot of silly little specific things that I want. What about yeah, like yeah. a toy that they've not made that you wish that they would make? Hang on, I'm gonna answer this question first. My oh, client answer yes, yes, your yes, question, yes, yes, and then yes, we'll yes. do that one. So I want to get the. Um, I collected when I was younger when they first came out the Batman the Animated Series figures, mm. um, and that they all got sold in the in the in the deposit for the house. Oh, they thing. were good figures. So they I want to get figures. like classic. I want to 
I want to get them in the in the box or at least with the box. There's a combat belt at them, which was the main one, which is really hard to get. Mister Freeze was good. Yeah, and then kind of get the main villains like Joker and Freeze and Scarecrow and the Batmobile. So that's remember, the next I remember thing I'm going to dive yeah. into. Maybe they were really I, good. in terms of dream toys that they've not made that I wish that they would make. Is mm-hmm. I, I have you ever seen the um, prototype Unicron G1 toy that yes. they made? It's they... like a tub. So it's round, and then the like, <laughs> arms pop out, and the legs are all spindly at the bottom, and then the head just comes out, and it's like the crappiest looking thing ever. But it's quite big. But... I, I want. I've got the stupid reaction one that's like based on that mm. design. I would like the actual transforming one because it's just terrible. Uh, in the in it. the in the age that we're in now with Haslab and crowd fund, that's another thing entirely. That I, I, companies crowdfunding stuff. Can, like discuss at another time put that on the list but in the age of where they're doing weird shit that they can like pre-sell to real fucking nerds i really hope that they someday do that yeah well they did the make has uh it has lab yeah. unicron which i got in it and it is the most Immense. ridiculous fucking toy ever it's just stupid i love it it's so big yeah it's weird that's only a few years old but i don't think they could do that now I don't think they would get the back in. The amount of plastic. It only and... just it only just got the back in. I yeah. think it was mm. very touch and go because they seem to have gone a bit cheaper. So the stuff is more like a hundred, two hundred instead of because that was like, like six hundred right? quid or yeah. something. It was nuts. I would like, I'd like the, going back on the Haslab theme. Very much like them to do uh, a re-release of the Firehouse, the Ghostbusters Firehouse, the real Ghostbusters ones to go mm. with those. I think that'd be cool. You were saying you would like the three point five, yeah, inch scale to go with that new, the new line that they've yeah, got. They're yeah, kind of. I was thinking about this the other day because I didn't buy them at first, but I obviously bought the Plaza eighty nine three point seven five ecto. And I've got the figures coming, and they're like GI Joe scale, aren't they? Yeah, with knee joints and everything. Yeah, yeah I think I hope they do it's more. A really good. I got the ecto one because it was quite cheap. That's really good. Mm. Ecto one, it's really good. Yeah, I hope they do more in that line. I don't know whether that's the plan with them being that G.I. Joe scale. The only or... thing that annoys me that they didn't do and they used to do on toy cars that sort of size is the steering wheel doesn't turn the wheels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the wheels don't turn. I used to love that about, like, you know, slightly bigger toy cars. Oh, yeah. Like Tonkers and stuff where you could turn the wheel. Yeah. That would make it perfect. I don't, I don't really want to answer a random conversation we're having there. Yeah, it's exactly. like, I don't really want to answer this because I want too many things, and I'm almost to the point now where I'm glad when like a line fails or <laughs> something comes out. And yeah, it's like, yeah. I, or they don't do it. You know, case in point, they did those, or they're going to do those. Um, redo like the Transformers has done Missing Link, where it's the old toy with new technology and it looks the same. So the Ninja Turtles are doing their one, and then a higher res. We were all like, "Great!" And then a high res photo came out, and they're oh, all yeah, they fucking put... bumpy. Mm-hmm. And, weird. Mm-hmm. and yeah. I was, I was like, "Thank God, I don't have to spend three hundred bucks on all these toys." <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, yeah. that helicopter though. Things. If they do the turtle copter, we're getting that technology right. We're gonna get that. Well, they're doing the technodrome, aren't they? That's the weird yeah. thing. Because I'd like, I'd really like them to just release. Like do what Hasbro have done and re-release the Playmates ones as yeah. is. And I'm I sure they have probably done, well, have Jackson, done it. I have them all. They have done that. <laughs> yeah, that's. All. Oh, they, they, I think they, that's I why these new ones are. They're trying to because that was like two years ago. Them a little bit, so they're trying they? to differentiate it, but they've done that the wrong way. I think. Have they re-released the movie ones? Because I remember liking the movie figures at the time. I the Playmates movie figures. I believe so. Yes, they're all. They've they all were cool. Been done. I stopped and then after. Some, I remember being normal. really jealous of somebody that uh, had loads of toys, but he had um, the turtles figures where the shell opened up in the back, and you could put stuff. Oh into yeah, it. I, I've been jealous, very jealous of that child. My good favorite friend. ever was, and I'm I'm going to rebuy. I will rebuy this, and there are a couple of good ones on eBay that I check in on every now and then. The wetsuit Michelangelo with the sunglasses. I don't know. He's oh, yeah. it's like orange, fluoro orange, fluoro yellow sunglasses. Mm. Just a, there's a dolphin on his shoulder. It's fucking good. And these ninja I'm stars gonna... were um, starfish. They were that was good. I'm gonna buy and send you the Star Trek turtles. How about that? 
That was a random mashup. You ever seen that? Do, do they? Well, there's a recent one. There's a pack yeah. of the later from... on. The later on, they did them all with Star Trek uniforms for no oh. reason other than <clears> they had the Star Trek license as well as the turtles. Yeah, license. right. Well, because there's a recent one. There's a Donatello um, Spock that they just um, put out for the most recent movie. Like in a, there's like a pack. They're all in Halloween costumes, but he's just Spock. And I was like, how have they done? And then you think, oh, it's all Paramount. It's all mm. yeah. No, but they, they they did back back in the day, like when it was winding down the toy line. They did a bunch of Star Trek ones for some reason. Just really get the nerds going, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. Well, all that under, chat. all that Star Trek <laughs> figure of Worf that comes with Alexander accessories. <laughs> oh weird. yeah, fantastic stuff. That, that, that's I think that's the thing too. It's like the old like as I get into being a really old man, I'm like. The shitter the toy is, like the better it yeah. is. The dumber the idea. Like those those things you've got with the they're like a Mighty Max, but it's a Starship Enterprise and it's got tiny figures in it. I'm oh, like, the how yeah, good, how the, good the little wolf. Uh, oh, yeah. mm. how good. Polly Pocket, but Star Trek. Are we yeah. finished for the day? Yeah, let's wrap it up. Yeah, yeah. that's been another. Up. That's been a week. That's been a podcast. That's been us, and we'll be back next week. Bye for now. Ba dum bum 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 b